welcome to No BS Baking. You got JP here. Now today we're going to talk a little bit about Baker's Percent, but I'm going to be giving you a really simple way to do it. It's the way I learned in baking school. It's all to do with ratio and proportion. Very easy, very simple, less chance for mistake. Let's go. So I wanted to take a few minutes here just to talk about Baker's Percent. I had a little bit of confusion with one of the viewers asking some questions about percentages. Anytime I ever talk about percentages, it's always in Baker's Percent. Now when I went to school, the first thing that we learned about was direct and indirect proportion. And we're going to talk a little bit about this because I want you to understand Baker's Percent. There's a lot of sites that have been out there. They go through it very quickly. Divide it by this, do this, do this. Here's a simple way to do it. Now, the first thing is, is that I would have a piece of paper and I'd draw my little X out there. Figure out what you want to calculate. Okay. Place a heading above there just to keep it all organized for you. Now, in this instance, we want grams and we're going to figure out percentages. However, you can also use direct and indirect proportion for things like you have your yeast quantity and the time that it takes based on that quantity and you might want to make an adjustment. You also might want to make a water temperature adjustment uh, based on your room temperature. So direct and indir indirect proportion will help you work out a lot of different things mathematically uh, to help you in baking. Now, all you have to do is enter in the values. Ultimately, you get your X, which is the unknown. And then you can start figuring stuff out. And when you're talking about Baker's Percent, you're talking about all of the ingredients based on flour being 100%. And, but keep in mind, this is on the gluten-forming flours only. So you start adding some of these other things in there, like buckwheat flours and all the rest of the stuff. Those are not included in the total flour amount, uh, which is equating to 100%. It's always on gluten-forming flours only. Hydration, when we're talking about hydration, we're talking about all the major liquids that are introduced into the formula to, you have a target hydration, say of 64 or 65%, you need to factor in all of the water that you use uh, for 100% accuracy. Now, if you want a 63% hydration dough, you gotta get your Start off with your graph here like this. Now we want grams on one side, we want percentage on the other. All the flour, we're going to base everything on flour. So we, in this example, we have 580 grams of flour. We know that that's going to be 100%. Now on the water side, we want 63%. This is what we want inside our formula. And so we have the X over there. So how many milliliters of gram or grams of water do we need? So the calculation is really quite simple. We take 63 down at the bottom. We multiply that by 580 grams. And then we divide this by 100. So you can see the flow 63 by 580, 100, all there in front of us. And the answer is 365. So there is our 63% water. Now this can be used for all the ingredients very simply exact same like this just swapping out water with a sugar percentage or a salt percentage or anything uh, it works exactly the same now in this instance here we want to we know what our water is but we want to look at it as a percentage so really simply it's the same method 365 times 100 divided by 580 
and that gives us our 62.93 or 63% water. Now the beautiful part about using this layout like this is that it's easy to follow along. It's not, you don't get confused as much as just trying to work things out on a piece of paper, um, uh, piece by piece. It's real simple. The old ratio and proportion square works absolutely great. Excellent way to keep organized and um, less chance for mistake. So we're going to make some small dinner bread. So we've got this formula that's right here right now. Now we take a look at both of the flours. We've got all purpose. We've got whole wheat flour uh, in there and that is 100%. Our total liquids, we've included milk, that's a major uh, uh, liquid that we're adding in there. The total liquids is 64%. So once again, you take a look at this. It's If we want to figure out what our percentages are, it's ingredient weight times 100 divided by the total flour. The other way around, it's ingredient percent, percent times total flour divided by 100, and that will give you the quantity in grams. Now, also the nice thing about laying it out like this is that you can quickly and easily lay out your batch weight. Uh, you know exactly what your batch is going to weigh. You got your scaling weight in there. You can divide your scaling weight into your batch weight, ultimately getting your yield. And by uh, subtracting uh, 120 or thereabouts uh, grams from your scaling weight, you can pretty much determine what your target finished weight is going to be. Now the benefits of Baker's Percent is very well known. You more precisely and quickly evaluate or compare the formula or recipe. If you hand it to me and I look at it in cups or this or that or even just looking at it in quantities, unless I know the percentages, it's very difficult for me to really quickly give you a good evaluation of your formula or recipe. If you put it into Baker's Percent, especially if you use metric, although it's not really required, uh, you have the percentages there you can share and get help with and understand recipes from around the world, all based on percentages, not quantities. You can quickly evaluate minor changes you may wish to make to optimize the characteristics that you want. As an example, you tasted your product, you got the recipe, but you tasted your product and you thought, oh man, it's not quite soft enough, or I'd like a little bit more sugar in it. I wonder what my sugar is. Okay, well, it's two or uh, 20 grams. Well, what is that in a percentage? Well, actually, in a percentage, it's only 2.5%. I tell you what, I'm gonna bump that up to 3%. How does that look? So you, you know, now you can really start playing around with your formulas and you can do it a lot more scientifically. So using a baking recipe is about following a formula. Understanding baking formulation is about focusing on the percentage of ingredients that you are using. Now, most bakers express their recipes in baker's percent using grams for the home baker and kgs for commercial use. Imperial, they use ounces for the home baker and pounds for commercial. No matter which one you want, it's not how you express the quantities, it's the percentages that are the most important thing. Now, without getting too confusing, you can use direct and indir indirect proportion for doing other calculations. So as an example, you have uh, a certain ingredient there, you put in 18 grams. That formula that you're using, 18 grams of that particular ingredient, yields 7 buns. Well, you want 22 buns. That's what you really want. So once again, 22 times 18 divided by 7. Now you know exactly what you need for um, uh, that particular ingredient. And this is the beautiful part about ratio and proportion. Now there's an indirect also. So your bread's taking too long to proof. So you use 8 grams and your time in minutes was 80 minutes. Now you want to knock that proofing time down to 60 minutes. So now you're going to an 8 times 80 
divided by 60 indirect 11 uh, grams of yeast should do the trick can even go any further my room temperatures increased what water temp temperature to use if your water temperature normally that you use you know if you put in 65 degree water based on your mixer and your mixing process and your room is around 73 degrees then you get a good finished mixing temperature now let's say your room temperature has gone up to 80 well, really quickly, you can just do the calculation. 65 times 73 divided by 80. Now it tells you you're going to need 59 degree water in that if, the, if it goes up to 80 based on your mixing and your general conditions that uh, uh, you um, have. Now, keep in mind that ratio and proportion are mathematical guidelines. There might be some minor adjustments that you may need to make in there, but generally, if you learn ratio and proportion, you can do a host of calculations, and if you play around with the direct and indirect uh, proportion, uh, can help you solve many, many problems, and it's easy to do and easy to follow. Thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you learned a little bit of something out of this one. I always try to give a little bit of information in there that's a little different from some of the other websites. But if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line. I'd be happy to answer any of your baking questions. And remember, please give me a like and a subscribe uh, down below. It really, really helps with this YouTube stuff and especially when you're starting off like I am. So uh, thank you, we'll see you again next time on No BS Baking.